Okay, so I guess I should start out. I'll introduce myself. I always just, you know, I like to start talking and then everybody just stops because I'll just start pulling people in as they walk by. Because that's good. I see someone coming in to get some free 4K style effects. Look at that. I start speaking, people immediately start coming. That's what I like to see. Uh, well, my name is Kevin P. McAuliffe. Uh, most people know me as a tutorial dude, uh, general avid guy, but I'm also one of the senior editors uh, at Extreme Reach in Toronto. And and it's, I feel like I'm in one of those sessions, you know, I'm a senior editor at Extreme Reach and I'm a, a rampant design tools user. And so what is, exactly does that mean? Well, I mean, you know, rampant design tools creates stylistic elements for you to use basically in just about any production, whether it's a music video, a lot of the stuff that I actually use it on is, uh, believe it or not, studio commercials. We do a lot of commercials, you know, whether it's for Warner Brothers or things like that. I need to get in, I need to rebuild elements. You know, there might be a smoke element in front of something that I need to get in and rebuild in a different language and then relay a smoke effect on top, ramp and design tools element. Now, of course, the big question that always ends up coming up is, well, Kev, why don't you just use effects? Effects are better. They're better. You could just use a plugin to make that. Well, the short answer to the why don't I use a plugin is the learning curve. I don't have time to learn these plugins. You know, granted, in the time that I have in the limited, you know, four hours of the evening, I can learn these plugins. What I need is I need a simple, quick solution if I need a lens flare, if I need a smoke effect. I want to be able to take that and drop it on my footage immediately and not have to learn. And let's be honest, okay? You know what everybody does when they get a plug-in? They don't learn it. They go to those presets first. They drop down the preset thing and they go and they look at all the presets to say, what can I just do immediately with these effects? Well, guess what? The ramp and design tools elements are like the presets. You don't need to learn anything. They're already there. But the one thing that I find that a lot of editors run into and the stumbling blocks they run into is how to get the most out of them in your editing application. You know, originally when I was going to do this demo, I was going to do a Let's talk about you know, how to make stylistic work with your rampant design tools element. But you know what? We got so many great people doing demos about that. So what I want to talk about is getting the most out of them inside of your editing application as far as finding the elements, as far as getting the elements in, things like that. You know, these are 4K elements, whether they're 4K fire, whether they're 4K style elements, light leaks, things like that. Do you need to use them in a 4K project? Nope. This is a 720p project. You can see format, 720p. The one thing I love in Media Composer is that I can actually use frame flex with a lot of these effects to get in and actually isolate parts of the actual effect if it's maybe a fire effect and I want more fire or things like that. That's how I can really get in and tailor them inside a Media Composer. Now what I also did, you know, one thing that, that is big for me, and this is also something that's a little bit different, you know, with my workflow as opposed to some other workflows that you'll see from people that are demoing for rampant effects is that for me, the rampant design tools elements are not, they're not the main course. They're not the meat and potatoes. They're not the pie. They're none of that. They're the gravy that's on the, the meat and potatoes. They're the ice cream that's on the, the, the pie. It's, it's really the thing that's gonna take it to the next level. A perfect example as I play this through is that believe it or not, every element in here has a rampant design tools element on it except one shot. Okay? And you probably couldn't even figure out what shot it is that doesn't have a rampant design tools element on it. Okay? But the point is, is that when I add these, I want to add them in a way that you don't see them. You look at these shots and I've added a lens flare that actually looks like the lens flare actually came from a camera. And the perfect example in this, and let me just find it here, is when the drummer's doing his little pounding on the drum right there. What I basically did with this was, I found a lens flare and that I liked a lot and I just turned it on its side and just put it right over top of the light. You know what the learning curve to do that was? Zero. I already knew how to do it. All done within Media Composer. I didn't have to think of anything. Okay? So let's backtrack a little bit and let's talk, actually talk about the first step, which is actually getting these elements into Media Composer to work with. Most people think right off the top of their head immediately, okay, well, these are 4K. Well, I'm working in the newest version of Media Composer, so let's import all of these as 4K, which we, you know, you could conceivably do that. You could come in, you could choose any one of the 4K project types, switch over, import. The problem is that when you buy a lot of your rampant design tool style elements is that you could be getting hundreds of elements. That's a long time to import. Okay? You want to work with these elements right away. So in most cases, you don't even actually need to import anything. 
what I'm actually going to do is I think I just, was this the folder I created? No, let me just create the, I got the new folder here, new elements here. It's not really new elements. It's just going to be some older elements uh, that I'd already brought in. And all I'm going to do inside of Media Composer is right click and say AMA Link To. I'm going to select all of them. This could be a bin that has 500 clips in it. Okay? I'm basically just going to say go. And literally, like this, all the Rampant Design Tools elements are going to be in this bin. Okay, if I had some style of, you know, let's say I had some uh, light leaks. I just create a bin, call it light leaks. Okay, import all those light leaks into one bin. Okay, and basically now once I have them in the bin, much like when I import, it's now just drag drop. Let's actually, let's actually drag and drop that properly here. There we go. And we can hit play. And there it is. Boom. That's 4K playing back in real time in Media Composer, AMA linked to from the drive. No problem. Okay. Now to be perfectly honest, what I probably would have done at this point is I would have created a project. Okay, well, you know what? Why don't we actually do this? And I'm going to show this to you here. Okay, I'm just going to switch projects here for a second. Always a dangerous thing when you're doing a demo. It's like, hey, let's switch projects. You know, normally like to live in the comfort of your own project. And what we're going to do is we're just going to call this project Rampant Design Tools Elements. Okay? Once we have the Rampant Design Tools Elements, exactly the same thing again. But here's where things get interesting, especially in Media Composer. Now, I don't know if you guys are Media Composer editors, but basically, in the past, what we had to do was we had to create separate bins. You could have one bin, but we'd say create separate bins for every element, whether it's light leaks or whatever. Now, I'm just going to create two bins just so you get the idea of how this is going to work. Okay? AMA link, boom. Okay? And to get real technical, I'm going to call this first half and second half just you know, to keep things easy. Okay? First half. Let's make sure we spell that right. First half, there we go. Create a new bin, call it second half. Okay, and what we'll do is just again take half the elements here, just drag them in there. Whoops, drag them in there. Okay, so now what do we do? What's important to keep in mind is that you know if you buy the rampant drive that has all the style elements in it, you're talking about thousands and thousands of elements. Okay, so you're going to divide them all up into bins, and what are you going to do? You're going to go into each project, and you're going to say, open bin, open bin, open bin. It, already, that sounds like a lot of work as opposed to using a plugin. Well, guess what? What I can simply do inside of Media Composer with any one of these bins open is, actually, let's just call this light leaks, just because I see some light leaks in here. Okay, whoops. Okay, we're going to call this RDT. Okay, and all I'm going to do in Media Composer is I'm going to tell Media Composer here, to make this a bin favorite. You're going to notice it appears right at the top of my project. Guess what? Every time I open any project, that folder is going to appear at the top with all my rampant design tools elements in it. I don't even need to think about it. It's already there now. As opposed to every time I make a new project, I got to keep opening these bins. Nope, done. Okay. Again, I could do it exactly the same thing, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay. Let's go to bin. Whoops. Let's actually make sure we got the bin selected here. I'm going to go to bin. Make sure I got the bin selected. There we go. Bin. Add to bin favorites. There we go. Let's switch back to the other project that we're working on. Okay. And inside of Rampant Demo, guess what I've now got sitting at the top? I've now got those favorites that I added in there. So conceivably, you would make a favorites bin. There you go. Favorites. For each one of the elements and literally, boom, boom, boom. Oh, you want some light leaks? Guess what? Here they all are. Let's double click on it. Let's call it up. Let's hit play. Boom. There they are. Okay. So let's talk about something a little bit different here. And let's talk about, let me just find some soft light here. Because those are always good ones to work with and, and good ones to use the example with. Okay? So as you can see, actually maybe even studio flares. I got some good studio flares in here. Okay? There we go. Okay? So here's the studio flare element that I really like. But you know what? I really only like half the element. I don't really like the whole element. Okay? The problem that you ran into before was, was that when you imported an element, you imported it as 1920 by 1080. You're stuck with it in this frame. If you zoomed in on it, you'd lose quality. You'd suddenly take a massive quality hit, suddenly see all the compression with, the, with the, the, the codec that it's captured as. But guess what? With these elements, because they're 4K, I can right click on them, I can come down to source settings, and I can actually use frame flex right from within the actual effect itself to isolate just the part of the effect that I want, just like that. I can now say apply, and I can say OK, and now this element has suddenly taken on a completely different look than what it had before. So I could start doubling these effects up inside a Media Composer and essentially build two, three, four, five different effects out of one element. 
Okay. Now, there's something that's important to keep in mind about working with these elements inside of Media Composer. It's not like After Effects or even Premiere for that, for that purpose. I don't use Premiere much. I do use Premiere, but not that much. And inside of Premiere, I know that we have access to transfer modes. Okay? After Effects, transfer modes. We all love transfer modes, right? Media Composer, guess what? Unless you're using the paint effect, you don't got it. Okay? So what do you do? Well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to grab a shot here. Okay? It doesn't even matter which one. You can see that I affected a lot of these shots here. Okay? Sure, we're going to take our guitar playing guy here. We're going to drop him in. I'll just stick him into the demo folders, fine. Okay? Let's grab that. Whoops. Let's grab that light leaks here. I believe that was down here. Was it soft light? Oh, no, it was a lens flare. Okay, here we go. So here's our lens flare. Okay? Perfect. Okay? So all we're going to do, and what I should also do with this, is when I come to my source settings, I know that this element is not need level scaling. So we'll just say apply. Okay? And all I'm going to do is just drop this into V2. Okay? Now, most media composer editors say, Kev, this is ridiculous. This is outrageous. I don't want to have to spend more money for another plugin. I don't want another plugin. Why am I spending more money on plugins? Well, guess what? Did you come from version 7 of Media Composer? You've probably already got the effect at your disposal. And you probably don't even notice it. If you're a Symphony user, you have BCC. BCC has an effect inside called, let's come into the effects palette here, inside of, not image restoration, Got some music rocking behind me here. That's pretty good. Inside of Keys and Blends, it's called Composite right here. Drag and drop. We now have access to the transfer modes by simply stepping into effects mode here. All I'm going to do is just slide the effects editor out of the way. I'm going to come down, make this an additive transfer mode, and now we now have it. Boom. Done. Okay? Guess what? I didn't use Symphony. I only used Media Composer. I didn't get BCC. But you got this little thing that probably nobody used called Avid Effects. Okay? Avid Effects is Boris Red rebranded for Avid Media Composer. Okay? So what do we do? Well, let me actually remove this effect here. So what we do is we basically come into, in this case, I'm going to use Boris Red. Technique works exactly the same inside of Avid Effects. All you're going to do is take the Boris Red real-time filter right here, drag and drop, step into effects mode. Okay? Let's launch the user interface. Inside the user interface, you're going to notice a tab called Composite, just like the effect that we just applied, called Composite. All we're going to do is do it as an additive transfer mode. I'm simply going to say Apply, and guess what we now have? We now have the same effect with that transfer mode. Now what are we going to do? Guess what? With lens flares, I use the additive transfer mode all the time, all the time. Go to, go to, go to. So all I'm going to do is step back into effects mode, I'm going to take that Boris Red effect. I'm basically just going to drag and drop it into a new bin. We'll just say for hypothetical purposes, this is a new bin. We're calling this Add Transfer Mode. Okay? So for the next element that I get, let's just use Soft Light. doesn't even really matter which part of Soft Light I'm going to use, what I should do again. Because I didn't link to these properly here, what we're going to do is just remove our video range. We'll say Apply. Say OK. Just drop it in about here. Okay, I don't need to go back into Boris Red or Avid Effects. All I need to do is simply take that additive transfer mode effect, drag it and drop it, and now it's ready to go. Now again, these are 4K elements playing back in real time in Media Composer by AMA linking to, dragging and dropping these effects right on top of it. Okay? Now, that of course brings up the next question. I've sort of isolated and really brought things down you know, to the effects that I used inside of my project. But let me give you the hypothetical. The hypothetical is, is that you've imported a th you know, 500 you know, lens flare effects. So how do you figure out which ones that you're going to use? Now, I'm just going to find the four lens flare effects here. Let me just find them here. Studio flares right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put studio flares in their own bin. Okay? And we're just going to call them, appropriately enough, Studio Flares. That's new elements, so we're just going to call it Studio Flares. Okay? So, with Studio Flares now, did it actually do it? Or did I, I think I just called the wrong bin Studio Flares. Oh, let's just move them out here. There we go. Okay, see you later. It doesn't, well, you know what then? We're just going to delete you if you don't want to move. There we go. Okay? So we got Studio Flares now. So this is how most people go and they look for files inside a Media Composer. They double click and they come back and they go play 
and they watch it and they say, that's not the one I want. So they double click and they come back to where it's black at the beginning and they play it. They go, that's not the one they want. And 500 you know, elements later, it's three hours from the time they started and they're like, oh, okay, I like number 497. Very, very cumbersome and inefficient way to work. But in Media Composer, we have the ability to get in and work in thumbnail view, okay? So all I'm gonna do is switch to thumbnail view, nice and tiny, just the way I like it. But what we're gonna do is just zoom in on these thumbnails, okay? Let us fill the window with these elements, okay? So now all I'm gonna do is inside of the bin, I'm gonna select any one of the elements that I wanna select and I'm gonna hit play, okay, which is the L key on the keyboard, and I'm just gonna pause it when I get to the point where I'm happy with how it looks. I'm gonna do the same thing with the next one, okay? Yes, this does require a little bit of work off the top, but of course, what's gonna happen? Let me just play this one here. I'm probably actually okay with where that one is. Let's play this one. Okay, good, perfect, okay? So, I switch back, I start working with this view, guess what? If I switch back, all those thumbnails are still there. Now you're probably thinking, well, Kev, when you close the bin, you're gonna lose everything again. But guess what? When I close that bin and I reopen it, all those thumbnails stay exactly where they were. So what you now have is a complete visual representation of every rampant design tools element that you could have inside a Media Composer, literally a, quick, a click away. It's kind of like having your own preset browser right there inside your bin. And at any point, you know, let's say, like I said, if I was using um, FrameFlex to get in and adjust the size of the frame, it's gonna update right here inside of the bin window. So now all I need to do is to pick the filter that I want is simply drag and drop and boom, there we go. Adjust it however I want, go drop it in and we're good to go. So I mean, really at the end of the day, you know, the rampant design tools elements are, first of all, they look great. Second of all, they can, I'm not gonna say that they're there to replace plugins because they're not. But again, a lot of people, when they have plugins, the first thing they do is they go right in and they go right to the presets. Show me all the presets that we got. These are the presets without having to learn anything about the presets. They're right there in front of your face to literally drag and drop. And then most people complain, I don't have the tools to work with. If you're coming from pre-version 8 of Media Composer, which many Media Composer editors are from version 7, you already have one of the two tools at your disposal to work with these elements literally immediately. Most people have these things installed and they don't even know that they're right there under their nose. And here's the great thing, is that if you don't have, let's say you're new to Media Composer, you're version 8 of Media Composer, people would say, oh, Kev, I don't want to spend $2,000 on, you know, a plug-in pack because, you know, that's more than I can afford. Well, guess what? This effect, actually, if I come back to the effects palette here, inside of the BCC key and blend section, it's actually available as what's called a continuum unit. So in spending, instead of spending $2,000 on filters, you can actually spend $199 on just the filters that are in here, specifically on that composite effect, to then util utilize all these rampant design tools literally as a drag and drop. So remember, at the end of the day, we're not trying to replace effects, we're trying to speed up your workflow, and using the rampant design tools elements in conjunction with an effect like composite from Boris Effects, and conjunction with keeping yourself as organized as you can possibly be by utilizing things like favorite bins, like using you know, thumbnail view and tailoring things up, you can really be firing off all of these elements into your production literally at the snap of a finger, which is the way that things should be. Okay, so if anybody has any questions that are sitting here, I know Wheels, you got a lot of questions. <laughs> Not yet, it's okay, you know me, and you can ask me all the questions anyways. We got, of course, all the team from Rampant Design Tools that you can see in the Rampant Design Tools shirts that you can add questions to. And I know Walter's giving out free Coke for everybody. Because if he's not, I hope he is. <laughs> uh, no, obviously ask questions. And of course, sign up. I think Will signed up when he came up here. Sign up because you can get some free 4K style effects. And of course, if you got any questions, ask the team here. Check out the website, rampantdesigntools.com. Thank you. I'm back here tomorrow again at 1.30. <laughs>